Hey YouTubers, welcome to another Electronics and More video. In this video, I'll be sharing with you another great tip, which very few people know about, that you can use to create or replace small plastic parts. Using the materials I'm about to show you, the completed parts will be extremely strong and highly resistant to wear and heat. If you have been following my channel for a long time, you'd know that I upload many types of videos including a couple pertaining to dentistry. One video shows how I make my own dental retainers right over here. See the, a lot of detail. Now the next step and it's very important you're gonna have to look at your mold and for instance you can see right here these little tiny little bubbles. Now these little bubbles what you're gonna have to do is take the scaler and the other video shows in great detail my extracted wisdom tooth being drilled out to expose the pulp chamber and root canals. Both videos are highly interesting and you can find the links to both of these videos in the video description area or by clicking over here on the circle with the eye a drop down menu will appear and you can see the links to the videos. Now what you're looking at right here are dental composite resins. There are several different types this one here is a micro hybrid resin. I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. The one behind it is a nano composite resin. And the one over here is also a nano composite resin, but it's flowable. So this one you can actually squeeze the syringe and the composite material will flow out nicely. And this one here, you have to pop the cap off and you can see it's more like a waxy paste or in a doughy consistency. All of these composite resins are used to restore lost tooth structure. Now prior to the mid 90's composite resins were not very strong. People know the silver fillings in their mouth which are known as amalgams were very strong fillings but there are risks associated with mercury inside those silver fillings. The reason why these type of materials were developed were for two reasons one, you don't want to have an amalgam or silver filling in the front of your mouth. It does not look good. And you also have risks associated with the mercury content in amalgam fillings. When this was first developed, the strength of the composite was nothing like what it is today. Back then, pre-1990s, this would not last too long in your mouth compared to an amalgam filling. The formulations today are incredibly strong. This is very, very hard material. It's like a piece of glass once it's cured using a UV light. And there's a lot less shrinkage, only 2 to 3%. So when UV light is placed onto the composite, when it's cured within 20 or 30 seconds, it's going to shrink a lot less, and it's going to be a lot stronger than composites from years ago. All of these composites are resin-based. The only difference is... This one here is a micro hybrid and the particles inside this resin are larger than the particles inside the nano composite which is this one here and then the flowable. The particles that are added into the resin are silica, quartz or barium glass. They're finely, finely pulverized, added in with the resin and some of those particles that are added to the composite make the composite material radio opaque so when you look at your teeth on an x-ray you'll be able to see exactly where the restorative material was placed. Typically this is applied to your teeth using bonding agents but what I've used it for in the past does not require any bonding agents. You're going to be using it directly out of the tube like you see here. These are available all over the internet. You can get them on eBay as well as other websites you're also going to want to get a placement tool. This is a composite placement tool. It makes working the composite very easy. You want to make sure the tool is always kept very clean using a towel with rubbing alcohol. The UV light is not necessary because this will cure in direct sunlight. Once you open up this tube, take a small amount out of the tube, I can place it right over here. You can see it's very doughy. If you place this directly in the sun for a few minutes, 
this would become very, very hard. Now, if you're going to do it in sunlight, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then you'll be done. If I use a curing light, I could do it in about 30 seconds. Now, as I said earlier, make sure your tools are kept very clean to prevent sticking using the rubbing alcohol. And then once you have it, you can even hold this in your hand and you can shape it into something. So you can move it around, you can roll it. All right. Or you can work it into any shape that you want. You can make a hole in the center. So if you had to make a particular piece of plastic to replace something, you could do it no problem at all using the composite that is not flowable which comes inside these tubes. So you can make this into a shape you would need. All right, make it like a weird shape like that. And then I can put this out in the sun, let it sit for 15 minutes, and this will be hard as a rock. Actually, much harder than epoxy resins I've used in the past. So I could take my curing light. Let me set this for eight. This requires 30 seconds, so I'm going to do it again. That'll make 16 seconds when it's done. Now up to 24. And almost to 32. Okay. This will pop off here very easily now. Even took the color off the bottom. And you can hear it. In a minute, I'm going to give you a few tests to show you how strong that is. Now, a while back, I had an odometer inside of a car, and there was a little tiny gear that broke. Two or three of the teeth snapped off, and I could not find a replacement anywhere for that odometer gear. So what I ended up doing was taking dental alginate, or I might have even used liquid silicone. I made a mold of that little tiny gear. Once it was complete, I made a cut in the top of it, removed the plastic gear, and then I took the flowable resin, which is right here. I took this off, I put the tip on, and then once the gear was removed from the mold, I inserted the tip, and I pushed down, and I filled up the entire mold from the bottom up. And once it was done, the top was left open, took my curing light, and I cured it just like that. It does work good. Now keep in mind, these are older resins. This one's two years old. It still works great. This one here is three years old. It still works great. Newer resins will flow a little easier than the one you see right here. But it does come in very handy if you have a project. And it's also non-conductive. I've done some testing. So if you have something to do with electronics, you can use this to protect a certain area. Let me do this. Do it again. Okay. Pop this off here. And you can see that resin. Over here is a washer that I made. And you can see how strong it is. Drop it. Pretty cool stuff. The uses are endless. Only limited by your skill. Whatever you can make, you'll be able to harden it right up and have a nice finished product. 
if this was nylon it would be very easy to bend it and this is extremely hard try bending it down and you can see it's not flexing at all very hard to break let me show you how strong this is right here this is the clear nano composite which is a little stronger than the micro hybrid let me put this in the pliers and squeeze really tight and you're going to see how much pressure I have to exert to actually get this to break. Okay, just want to make sure it's flat. There you go. Now I'm going to squeeze hard. And I kept squeezing. And as you can see, it didn't break. Let me do it again. Is this just to show you how strong this is and why it works so well in your mouth. <clears throat> Finally! That was a lot of pressure to get it to break and you can see it looks just like crushed glass. So it's really really strong stuff. Now take a look at this one right here. This one is the A1. Look at how thin that is. All right. It's around a millimeter and a half. Now, if this was epoxy resin, this would be very easy to snap. Now I'm going to try and do it by hand. Watch how much pressure it takes for me to get this to break. Now I'm going to try and bend it back hard. <sighs> very, very strong. I, can, I can't get it to break. And you can hear it. Let me tip this back a little bit. Sounds like glass. I could probably get it to break if I grab the pliers and snap it. There it goes, finally. But it is pretty tough stuff. Using a dental composite bonding agent, you can apply it to a ceramic item which has a chip, and then you can also repair it using these composites. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.